see Danny's here already waiting. We'll be jo- uh, joining him on the uh, program here. He's at back in the green room. Yeah, he's probably back there watching, he's looking at his watch so that John Doyle does not take any of his time. You think that's what it is? I think it is, yeah. John, <laughs> you're going to put you on a very short leash this morning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so accurate. Great comment. Right. Besides, it's a gray room, not a green room. You're right. You're right. You're right. Depends Char- on charcoal gray. Which rich room are you in, I guess, though, right? Well, he's sitting back there in the charcoal with, gray room. With Colin. Yes. Right now. But if he was in the kitchen, what color's the kitchen? The light's never on. I don't know. <laughs> morning, John Doyle, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning to everybody. <laughs> Wonderful to have you with us. It is. The, uh, <laughs> the second of the uh, Rucker-Doyle debates was uh, last night. You guys did two of these, October 1, October 15. You'll do another one on the 22nd at our candidate forum. That All along was your plan for Martinsburg, that area. That is correct. Be part of ours that we're that doing. That is correct. And we appreciate you accommodating us here. And what made your... Uh, appearance with Mrs. Rucker unique was you folks were doing this kind of on your own without a moderator and allowing for detailed answers if you needed to give a detailed answer. That is correct. We did not uh, put a time limit on ourselves. Mm Mm-hmm. We, each of us agreed we'll answer the question, and then when we're done, we'll let the other person answer the question. Well, after doing uh, two of these, uh, what's your thought on how they went? I think they went really well. I think in both of them, uh, the people who came uh, to the debate came away with a clear understanding of where it is that we differ. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, each la- lasted how long? The, the first Each one, one was, was an hour and a half. And that's just kind of when it ran out of its natural course, or was it? No, planned? we had agreed it would be an hour and a half. Start okay. at seven, end at eight thirty. And uh, how did it go from an, uh, a point of uh, filibustering? I don't think either one of us filibustered. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, in regards to the questions and the crowd behavior, how did that go? Uh, in both of them, the crowd was quite well behaved. I mean, it, I, I presumed that it would be, and it, and it was. Yeah. The questions were pointed. They were substantive. Uh, on, 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 on some occasions, I was surprised by a question and had to, had to think for a second or two before I you know, decided what it is I thought about that particular subject. It, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of times there were things that I had never thought of before and w- was forced to think on my feet. What seems to be on people's minds the most in regards to the questions that you received? Uh, schools, taxes, uh, clean water, uh, and abortion, um, a number of other things. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the questions at both forums ran the gamut. Did you both start off with uh, an opening monologue? Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe three, four minutes a piece, something like that. And were you giving basically position statements and, and such during those monologues? Um, I didn't. Well, I did some. I I, I, I stated a, a half a dozen things that that are that I consider to be the most important planks of my platform, uh, and I also gave a little bit about uh, my history, mm-hmm. uh, and I, and she did the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Would you do these again if uh, if there was a third one? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we wanted to do a third one in Charlestown. Uh, and we just couldn't work it out. In fact, we were either going to do it in Charlestown or up on the mountain. Uh, and and uh, I, I said, Patricia, whichever place you want to do it, uh, we can. And she said, I'd like to do it on the mountain because everybody ignores the Blue Ridge Mountain. Uh, but I'm worried that th- not many people will show up. If we do it in Charlestown, people will show up. Like Shenandoah, you're talking about, yes. And, and Blue Ridge Acres, where okay. she lives, yeah. Uh, uh, Harpers Ferry campsites. Gotcha. Uh, any of a number of subdivisions up there. Um, so we ended up just not doing it, in part because our schedules just filled up so much we couldn't work it in. Yeah. Was this format successful in your mind because of the two of you, or could any two candidates do this? Oh, boy. Uh, I do think that the respect that Senator Rucker and I have for each other uh, had a lot to do with how well it went. You don't always have two opponents who like and respect each other. Uh, It's easy uh, for animosity to creep in 
particularly if there are people in the audience who know that there's animosity and will ask a question just to provoke the animosity. Poking the bear. Yeah. They call yeah. those people talk show hosts. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> they, they do. That's exactly right. Uh, and, and in our case, bo- both times in our opening remarks, Senator Rucker and I made it clear that we like and respect each other. And I think we communicated that we weren't going to go for the bait for any kind of questions like that. So we didn't get them. And let me just throw this in before the two of you start with questions. As you can ask John, doesn't that be about his appearances with Mrs. Rucker? You have questions about his positions running for office. Obviously, you can ask those questions, too. Yeah. Uh, John, I suspect another reason that uh, uh, it went so well is that both of you are very, very well known in the community. You're not neophytes. You're not running for office the first time. Uh, I doubt if anybody around does not know your position and Patricia's positions. And that, to me, is was an intriguing part of your discussion because you are – you are very liberal, and you're an unapologetic liberal. I, 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 I'm going to push back okay, on the very fine. part. Yeah, okay. I'm a liberal. Okay. And I, I don't think very liberal. Okay, fine. And then I, <laughs> but I would, Medium liberal. I would say. Yeah, moderate liberal. Yeah, yeah. but Patricia is on the opposite of the scale mm-hmm. about the same way you are. So there's a there's not this gray area. Both of you have well-defined positions. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a, a, a both an intriguing and attractive part of your discussion. So, and there's probably not a question on that, I guess. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard a question yeah, yet, Bill, question, but that's okay. You're yeah, the admiral. You can, you know, you're the question comes, you, you can issue instructions. So that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, in most forums, most debates, uh, the questions are somewhat filtered. Uh, in, your, in this case, they were not filtered. They came uh, from the audience. Did you find there, and I think you alluded to it a second ago, were there any gotcha questions or all of them very legitimate, substantive questions? Uh, I think they were all legitimate questions there were a couple that i sensed were phrased as gotcha questions uh, uh, and it's interesting there was one last night for me uh, i think there were one or two in shepherdstown for senator rucker that w- that you might look at, at the way the question was phrased and think oh this is a gotcha and I sort of expected, see, in Shepherdstown, the, the, uh, uh, probably three-quarters of the audience would, would be Democrats. So this was sort of in my stadium. And the questions reflected that. I figured uh, in, in, uh, at Musselman High School, it would be the opposite. You, know, have, you have the one debate in the bluest part of the district. Then you have the other debate in the reddest part of the district. Actually, I thought the ones last night were were more evenly balanced than I thought they might be. Uh, so anyway, I'm 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 elaborating on that a little bit, but yeah. So John, how many at each of the the forums? How many people were in the audience? Just off the top of your head, 10, well, 20, 50? In in Shepherdstown, uh, the auditorium at the Robert C. Byrd Center mm-hmm. for Congressional History and Education holds 99 people. There were about four or five seats scattered around that were open, but there were a half a dozen people standing in the back. Wow. And they turned about a dozen people away. No kidding. Yes. Last night, uh, the that classroom holds 75. We only had about 40 people. Okay. But like I say, I... I assign the the sparsity of the crowd last night to the fact that all of a sudden we had this cold, windy weather plus some rain, and I think some people just decided not I'm not going out in this John, weather. What percentage so, of the population voting in this is Berkeley versus Jefferson County? Um, the population is about 55% in Jefferson, 45% in Berkeley. Jefferson always turns out in much higher percentages. So it's probably about going to be about 60-40 in terms of uh, the turnout. Uh, the turnout. Good. So let me, let me follow up then. <coughs> the other thing that I recall from my former life is, and this was really more on the federal level, when uh-huh. you had a Shelley Moore Capito in the audience, there were always sort of some, I don't want to call them shills, but people in the audience who were kind of plants to ask a particular question um, of when it came time for the questions. And of course, those 
that was formatted way differently than this was. So, I mean, did you go to your supporters and say, hey, come to this one in Shepherdstown? Or was there any of that that you perceived or um, uh, observed? No. Um, I always encourage everybody to come mm -hmm. out to these. Uh, even people that I know don't agree with me. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I would see somebody say, hey, please come to the debate. Uh, I didn't I didn't see any shells. <laughs> there were two people wearing Rucker t-shirts, but my suspicion is they weren't shells. She didn't plant them there. They just came. Yeah, it's uh, and, and, and each one of, one of them didn't ask any questions. I talked to him afterwards, a uh, really bright fella, uh, talked to him about, about school choice, which did not come up in the debate last night. It did at the one in Shepherdstown. Uh, and uh, the other one uh, did ask a, a question, which I thought was a pretty good question. So, John, what were the demographics? Were they evenly split between, the, say, the, in Shepherdstown, between the students and the seniors and in uh, Inwood? What, what were the demographics? I, that's a good question, Bill. About a third of the audience in Shepherdstown were students, at least a quarter, uh, maybe a third. The basketball coach brought his whole team. <laughs> I really appreciated that. I think that is really great, you know, for a coach to say, hey, you're going to learn something. Let's, let's go to this debate. Yeah. Um, the uh, – uh, and there were no students there last night. So that, that may have had something to do with it. But again, there were about, uh, I, I talked to several people who got there like 7.05 and they couldn't get in. Yeah, they, so they just turned around and left. You're talking about uh, Shepherdstown. And Shepherdstown, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. John Doyle, our guest here on the program. And by the way, we will be talking with Senator Rucker tomorrow on our program as well. John, let's talk about some of the main differences between you and Senator Rucker. Uh, let's talk about uh, schools, for instance, public schools, charter schools, Hope Scholarship. Uh, where do you folks differ in lines with uh, us? We have fundamental differences on that issue. Uh, I am a strong supporter of the public schools. The whole history of our country is that we invented the public school. Uh, back in the early part of the 19th century. And the idea was, and this is why you see in the Constitution of just about every state in the Union, something like the phrase in the West Virginia Constitution, it shall be the responsibility of the legislature to provide for a thorough and efficient system of free schools. The term in the 19th century was free school, not public school. And I think that public school system is what made this country great. And I don't and I see now an attempt to pick away at that, to weaken our system of public schools. And uh, I, I do think the idea of school choice, uh, the train may have already left the station on that. Uh, we may end up having more choice than, than I would personally prefer. I am adamant about this, though. If we're going to give money to people to send their kids to private schools or homeschool them, we have no business giving it to people that can afford it themselves. I think that is just fundamentally wrong. Bill or Maria? Position question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was so in, I was so caught up in your answer, John. I was not thinking ahead. So Bill, Bill was here in the Fife and Bugle Corps from yeah, the no, Continental I, Army. I, I, this is this, this doesn't go back that far, Rod. It goes back to about the 1830s. Yeah, this is a this is not a question, but it's a, an observation, and it harkens back to what I said earlier, John. I was intrigued, among other things, the strong positions that you and Patricia take. You take strong positions but you're unapologetic you you're mm -hmm. very passionate about your position and the school is one example there mm -hmm. and you make both very compelling arguments i'm sorry that it was did not come up last night uh in the discussion i, I was it, surprised yeah. that no one asked about and, it and yeah. been very interested in watching the kind of give and take in each one of your strong positions yeah. because particularly in my case it, 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 you know, when I listed my planks in my platform, yeah. in, in my opening remarks, I did it both in Shepherdstown and last night, and I said, I stand for good public schools, emphasis on public. I, I mean, I, I tried to trigger a question 
on, yeah. on, on that issue, we didn't get one. Do you consider public charter schools to be public? Because they're I, not private schools. Depend. Well, wait a minute. The ones we have are private. Not the, not the charter schools that the state set up. Those are public. No, they're not. They're sure. run by private corporations. But they're public. Uh, they're not public. They don't charge tuition. They're free. I think if it isn't under the local board of education, it's not a public school. If you're going to let private corporations determine who their students are, now they don't charge tuition, but they get a ton of money from the state. Yeah, but do so it. do the public schools. That yeah. doesn't make them private. That's right. No, 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 no. If it's not run by the government, it's not a public school, in my opinion. I, now we, my la, when I was in the legislature, not my last year, but my, either next to last year or third from last year, these things run together, folks. Um, we did pass out of the uh, uh, of the House Education Committee a public charter school program mm -hmm. where it the state would run it, but it would be much looser rules than you have with the regular public schools. Right. Uh, we passed it out, and the next day, the leadership ordered the committee back in, back to meet again and undo it. So we had passed it out of the House Committee Education Committee for one day. I think that would have worked, uh, but and and I am for what's called what is truly a public charter school, which is a public school with with much looser rules than you normally have with the other public schools. But that yeah, good, Maria. Okay. So there's no question that you're an advocate for public education. I, I think that's clear. Do you think that public schools, in specifically in the Eastern Panhandle, are serving students and parents to the best of their ability? So no, because for, they're underfunded. Okay, so funding is the key. That is the key in all of that. That's right. Okay, John, with other hot button button issues addressed, such as abortion. Was that uh, yes, guys, yeah, we talked about that, that a good yeah. bit yeah. Uh, in in both forums. What are yes. your differences on abortion, John? I believe in Roe versus Wade. Uh, I, I I think that was the sensible compromise between people like me who believe it should be the woman's choice, and people like Senator Rucker who believe that abortion should be outlawed, and. I, I, under Roe versus Wade, for the first trimester, it was essentially all total, it's all the woman's choice, totally. In the second trimester, there were some restrictions. And in the third trimester, a whole lot of really tight restrictions. Kind of and that, and that would, oh, okay, I'll, I'll stop pounding the table Thank here. You. I was pounding it very lightly. <laughs> The, and making your point. Yes, I was. That's what. Thank you. There's thank no you, such thing as a little pounding, John. It's, <laughs> well, it makes and, noise for all of us. And there's John. not nothing as a small point either. He has no. to pound. And I, make you, a big you are. Point. No, that is exactly right. You can't be a little <laughs> bit pregnant. You're either all the way pregnant or you're not. And get, of I'll, I'll get back to the point here in a minute. Yeah. But this reminds me when somebody says, "In my humble opinion, there is nothing humble about an opinion." That's so exactly anyway. right. <laughs> um, Next, I'd like to hear you debate arithmetic versus math. What is which? Go ahead. Don't get sidetracked. No, 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 no. 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 Stay, with <laughs> Stay with your thoughts. Yeah. So at any rate, and, and 24 weeks is what I think most uh, OBGYNs think is fetal viability. I mean, it varies a, a week or two shorter, a week or two longer, but that's approximate. And I, I think after fetal viability, it ought to be really, really difficult. I think this. I think that's the kind of of compromise that the public wants. And we had it with Roe versus Wade. And incidentally, let me throw this out, and this is not something uh, Senator Rucker and I have talked about, so I don't know what her view is on this. You can ask her tomorrow if you want, certainly. And that is, you keep hearing from many conservatives that the Supreme Court in Dobbs threw the issue back to the states. That's not what the Supreme Court did. If you read the ruling, it said... This issue is forever referred to the political branches of government, meaning the executive and the legislative, at both the state and federal level. So it is, is per, totally within the Supreme Court's ruling in Dobbs for the U.S. Congress to either ban abortion completely 
or bring back Roe versus Wade. Or the default position, they can also defer to the states, can they not? They can. But what I'm saying is some people, and you hear this mostly from conservatives, they think seem to think the court said it has to be done at the state level. That is not what the court said. John, let's talk about state income tax cuts. The uh, governor wanted to get it down to zero at some point along the way. When he leaves office, it'll be uh, just shy of a complete three-tenths of a percent uh, personal income tax cut, or uh, 30% of the full rate, sorry. So uh, John Doyle and the Democrats are in charge of the legislature. Would you reverse these tax cuts, or would you halt them where they are, keep them going? Well, I, I would halt them where they are, except I would change the structure. So more of the tax cut that we have had goes to middle and lower income people, and less of it goes to upper income people. If you want to fire up an economy, you put the money in the hands of people who will spend it. And the lower down the income scale people are, the more of a tax cut they spend and the more of it they spend locally. That, that's, there have been study after study after study that shows that. Now, I think it would be the height of folly to eliminate the income tax. Because if you eliminate the income tax, where are you going to get all this money, which used to be 45% of the general fund, is now down to 40% because of the tax cuts, and 40% is okay with me. But I, I think in order for a tax structure to work, it needs to be balanced. Every tax under the sun is a form of one of three basic kinds of taxes, income taxes, sales taxes, property taxes. And it can be levied on either individuals or businesses. So, so there, if you want to say it's six different kinds of taxes, that's okay. Um, the, if you totally eliminate the tax that is bringing in 40% of your general fund, the only way you're going to get the money back is to raise other taxes. Every state in the union that has no income tax has real estate property taxes through the roof. Everybody gets their money somehow. Good answer. Uh, um, there's dead air here, folks. I was what deferring. About <laughs> we only have a minute and a half left, so I was minute. calculating here how we're going to proceed. What about a sales tax reduction? I know some states, um, Delaware, for example, which has become you know, just this harbinger for seniors um, because there's no sales tax on anything. Is sales tax somewhere that you'd go? And we got well, you. could you also include a state yourself. tax with her sales yes. tax? Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute. A state sales tax is a state tax. No, a, a state tax. Oh, estate tax. Estate tax. You have one minute, Mr. Doyle. And that's a property tax. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the I have a friend, I can't remember his name, about 20 years ago. We worked together a lot. He was chair of the finance committee of the House of Representatives of the state of Washington. Washington has no income tax. Oregon next, but they have a really, really high sales tax. Oregon next door has no sales tax, but a really, really high uh, uh, income tax. And I said, you guys need to have a summit meeting. He says, yeah, and adopt the Idaho tax code, which has a balance between income taxes and sales taxes very much like West Virginia's. Mr. He Doyle, <laughs> one sentence. You're going to wrap it up? Good. No, that's okay. Right. Good to see you again. It is good to be here. <laughs> we will hear you from guys you. are fun. <laughs> Mrs. Rucker and tomorrow. gals. That's, that's what we, that's what we <laughs> and, try to uh, be next, every day, John. <laughs> Tuesday, uh, the 22nd, Mr. Doyle and Mrs. Rucker will be at our candidate forum once again at the Berkeley County Commission Chamber meeting room.